My name's Mumba, Mumba Kafula. Um, some people may know me as Maria, because that was my original name before I adopted my new name, which was given to me by my husband's family. So I've adopted it for the rest of my life, really. So I've kept Mumba, but I've kept Maria, but Mumba's my first name now. Um, yeah, and I'm a, I'm a member of um, this community for many years now, should I say. <laughs> Um, in 2012, I set up my company, Dynamic Heights. Um, it's a motivational and confidence building training and coaching service. So I'm the main uh, motivational coach. And what I do is I work predominantly with women around helping them to basically aspire to who they want to be. I um, hold training and coaching sessions, particularly around them wanting to set up their own businesses. So it's really about them having ideas and working through um, how they can bring it to fruition. I also do, an, on the coaching side, interview, training, presentation skills, uh, confidence building, going for interviews and helping people in all walks of life, really. Uh, currently, my focus is around um, Afro-Caribbean women. I've been working quite recently a lot on developing um, their aspirational um, growth. And my training sessions are geared quite predominantly around that. So that's what I've been doing. Um, my latest venture is as part of International Women's Week and uh, with it being the year of the woman, I'm holding a seminar event um, not far from here actually at the university down the road and that's also about helping people to aspire educationally as well and use these buildings that some of us are not actually in the habit of going to so it's almost it's all about empowerment self-empowerment it's about um, valuing who you are being with like-minded women and working together we've got some great speakers um, I'm also going to present um, uh, the launch of my book. I've just written a book and it's called How to Be a Confident Woman in Seven Easy Steps. So um, it's going to be a great day. It's coming up in March and um, I'm actually helping people to find out more about it so they can come along and join in, be part of the, the celebrations of who we are as black women. Well, my first role at Manchester Council was in regeneration and I was a um, administrative type uh, clerical support and it was all around the changes and the transition in human regeneration so that was um, uh, a great and exciting time for Mossad and Hume. So I remember being that but prior to that um, I used to do work as a youth worker at Carmel Road. I think that's where a lot of my cultural knowledge and awareness and started to rebirth really. Uh, it was very much connected to, um, back in the day we all know of uh, Papa Barry Edwards and he was a, a real strong influence um, in me and my cultural awareness. So there's a lot of us from the, that era who had a connection uh, with Carmel Road. We were involved in a lot of things like Culture Week and really getting to understand more of our roots so that was a real stepping stone and an impetus for me um, to going into the council feeling quite empowered and knowledgeable about who, who I was as a person and what I had to offer. So I give a lot of my um, acriments and growth and development to people like uh, Barry Edwards because he was a real strong force and helped us around injustice in the community, particularly focused around young, young males, the great... Um, advocate and activist of um, empowerment for black people. So that helped me going into the council and feeling confident in applying for jobs and getting one. So uh, regeneration I started in, uh, I moved on into areas of housing. Um, I've worked in um, um, children's services. I've worked in homeless shared housing, managing shared housing. Um, and I think one of the areas that 
I was really pleased to be successful in getting was around the Agenda 2010 manager's role, which came out of the, after the Stephen Lawrence inquiry, there was um, changes in the Race Relations Amendment Act in 2000, and that had um, set a duty on local authorities to be really focusing on ending discrimination and building race equalities across their um, services. So part of my role was to um, to work with organisations within and outside of the council. Um, very, very challenging role, may I add, because it was only of one person. So it was quite an impractical role, to be honest. Um, many people at the time thought it was, it was lip service. I think the challenge was trying to meet all needs for all men in a very difficult time, difficult responsibility. So. It's very much about trying to get a lot of people from the community on board rather than them being sceptical about what it could achieve. It was, what can we do with what we have? That Agenda 2010 was involved in was education, health, crime and employment. So it was helping organisations to establish that being a core thread within their organisation as priority areas to consider the needs of um, the BME communities of Manchester. Yeah, the, the climate, as I say, was difficult because it was a lot of responsibility. Um, not that we didn't have people we worked with in the council, but you didn't have a team with you. So it's really about, I felt it was more about how do I establish building relationships with other sectors um, and industries. So part of what I did was really get connected uh, with what was going on. Um, how organisations needed to reflect uh, BME issues and part of that was understanding what the organisation did initially and um, work around where the communities felt things were lacking. So some of the work that I did was I'd organise road shows and part of the road shows was for the community to come together with organisations to have conversations to share and showcase who we are and what we did. Um, and to build connections really, because I think part of the, the challenges was uh, for organisations to uh, know what to do without other people who know what they needed to have an impact on that. So it was about working together and collaborating ideas and initiatives. So that was basically um, roundtable discussions as well were other things that I was you know, involved in instigating. It was basically getting people to talk around what the needs were so that it's not just a paper exercise, it was more connected to the real issues around crime um, and disorder. Um, a lot of the BME communities were affected. And if we go back a while, when we think about the SUS laws, there's a lot of things that instigated from them. So you may not have the term, you know, SUS laws, but a lot of it was, was going on in our communities. It'd be difficult to specify individual situations but there was it was an undercurrent it was an undercurrent of things happening that we could who feels it knows it they say um, and so I think a lot of issues to do with racism was quite heightened in uh, the 70s 80s um, where I feel that as a community we were more connected into how to go forward together um, I think over the years it's it's probably a lot more subtle a lot more unidentifiable because it's not as visible um, but it still it still was happening for example when I worked in the uh, Manchester City Council I was elected as the vice chair for uh, the Black Officers Association and part of that was because you know the council recognized there was injustices unfair treatment discrimination in the council so part of our role was to work towards helping our um, co-workers have a voice in terms of some of the changes that needed to happen. Um, and I suppose looking at achievements, one of them was, I remember being the first black woman to speak at the first all black officers conference in the city council. It had never been done before. That was part of something we initiated. We wanted to see us all together in one room, talking about our issues with those people in positions of power. So um, that was a nerve wracking time for me, but it was really empowering. It was empowering for others because part of what 
my responsibility there was was to show that we we can move forward we can achieve even with the barriers it was very much rather than a a position of not having power it was a position of look what we have and what we can do if we work towards it so yeah i remember getting accolades from other members of the other black workers and also from people in positions of power in the council um, for the, you know, the speech that I did. So yeah, that was something I'm very proud of to be able to have initiated and supported and organised as well. What it does is it sets a catalyst and a precedent for people to know these are just things that we should be doing anyway. Um, yes, it, it would look good for anybody to do anything on the first level of any kind, but I think what was it was a historical moment in a sense because um, the City Council, I believe, were really impacted by, by the amount of greatness in the room and that we'd all turned up and we all felt, you know, it was something that we should be doing. Um, as far as I know, it wasn't something that continued, but I know that, you know, it was something that we would have liked to have kept going. But with the powers that be, there's only so much you can do at certain times, certain positions that you have. Yeah. Yes, in, um, well, just slightly going back before that, one of the things I would say that um, I was grateful for is while I was working in the council, um, we were in positions to apply. Not, all, not everybody was successful. I was one of the successful ones in applying to be able to undertake my degree while working. So at the time it was called day release and you were kind of quite privileged if you were allocated this opportunity to have day release. So I was able to do my public administration degree while working, which was a very big challenge because it's like working full time, doing a three years degree, family and so on. So I feel that was an achievement and a challenge to be able to do that successfully and get that achievement. So that was some of the things that I talked about at the, at the conference with the black officers. It was really about really pushing ourselves to aspire to achieve, even with the limited resources that we have. So when I received in 2000, um, it was the fir first again <laughs> of um, the City Council started to hold award ceremonies to acknowledge their staff. And the first year that they did it was in the year 2000. And that was when I won the category award for um, it was an award of excellence for working together for Manchester. So, brilliant time, great night as well. It was a very memorable evening, family and friends around and being able to be very apprehensive, wondering if you were going to win and then to win. I felt like I'd achieved that not just for myself, but for everybody else who worked in the council because it was a recognition of our achievement and I thought my achievement doesn't come just by me, it comes by other people around me, people I'm engaged with, people I connect with, network with. So I collected it not just for myself but for every other black officer in the council, to be honest. So that was an achievement for all of us, not just for me. I think the biggest thing for me um, was I recognised that and this is part of what I teach and support others to do now. We, we all have something within us. We all have a gift of some kind. We all have something to offer. And I think sometimes we can get caught up with the type of work that we do and we're not really able to shine in the areas that we're really passionate about. And um, over the years, I knew there was something else that I, I was connected with. I do pieces of work and just do it for free. I do a lot of interview preparation for people going into jobs in the council and get time with them. We'd go for a drink or we'd talk through, I'd help them with the applications and so on. And it was one day somebody said to me, um, you could do this as a job. And I was like, could I? And it was something that I'd never really thought of. I was just doing it out of my giving. Um, but it planted a seed. It planted a seed and um, I think over the years, I worked towards the idea really, is it something I could do? So um, there was an opportunity that I had when I went on a secondment from the council to work with uh, Manchester Metropolitan University. I applied 
for the job because I was at a point where I want to do something different and I knew training was my area, which is something I, I really enjoyed thinking and um, I did pockets of it in the council. So when this job came up, I applied and when I got it, I was like, yes, this is my time to leave. It was a, a short term post, it was for a year, but I felt it would be a catalyst to move on. However, um, the council didn't want me to go, which I thought was a good thing in a sense, I felt valued. So they asked me to go on a secondment rather than to leave. So I had to apply for a secondment and I did and I got it. So when did this piece of work, um, it was so exhilarating and it's totally new and different, very much not as parochial as being in the council. I felt I could spread my wings, use my own ideas and everything. So I knew that was my area that I really felt good about. So I went back to the council because I had got a bit of cold feet about spreading my wings at that time. So the good thing is I had that security of a job to go back to. Um, so with that, alongside of encouragement from family, um, particularly my mum, she's been a tower of great strength all of my life. And God rest her soul, she's not with us now, but she was always a very strong woman who very quietly got on with things but made incredible transitions and changes in our lives as, as her children. Um, my, my father was, um, he is actually, but he used, he's still with us, but he used to um, have his own business over a number of years. Um, very, one of the first um, businesses he had was working with housing associations as a, as a black work and brought other people on so I've had good role models I believe um, in my life that has helped me um, subconsciously or not to, to do the work that I do I've got great um, husband who supports me I've got great children who you know like what I do and support me so I think they're all conduits in a in a cog really to move move you forward so Setting up my business came at a point when I realised in the council wasn't really going as far as I wanted to and I think that's what happened for a lot of people. Um, they aspired to, to bigger things but couldn't get there and I think that's the challenging and the frustration for some of us because we have it within but when there's barriers and blocks. So I think I felt the best way to develop what I wanted was to do it on my own. So um, I made that big leap <laughs> and yeah, never regret it. Very, very challenging, but very, very rewarding as well. The challenges are not having, um, striving and not having money in your pocket, but working towards a goal. And then getting your first uh, job is a great exhilaration and um, just slowly moving on and keep working, doing what you, doing what you do best really. And that's what I teach. Um, my biggest um, core value uh, when I work with women is about them recognising, uh, I came across this word and it's really taken me aback and I utilise it and I think that's, no I don't think, I know that's my USP. And it's about helping women to draw out their indomitable strength, their indomitable spirit. It's a word that means, um, it's a great word of empowerment, like lion-hearted and strong-willed and um, um, secure and all the things that we have but can be limited by our circumstances and experiences. So part of the gift I feel that I have is to help women to draw that out, to move on to bigger and better things. Well, Louise Dacacode has always been a strong force, I believe, in the community. I think she had so much about her. I mean, just her presence was enough for people to just instantly respect who she was. Um, she had great poise, she had great um, stamina, she was very eloquent in, in her delivery and her execution of what she had to say. And she was somebody to look up to, she was a great role model. And I met her in, in many different environments, Moshwaf was one, um, quite a lot of things around Culture Week at Carmel Road, in a lot of meetings in the communities. She was um, stood up and talked, or was on platforms of talking um, on behalf of the community, um, links with PACT. 
um, had really good, meaningful conversations all around community development. Um, so being part of Moshwath um, for a short time was on the board as well. Um, on the board, I forgot about that actually. I was on the board, but I actually also delivered training for women, um, employability skills again. So yet again, the two entities where I've been linked with Louise has been about me building my skill sets in training. Yeah, so with Moshwaf and with Pat have both been elements of me being able to set foundations for what I've been doing. So I um, feel very privileged that I've been part of her connection in, to be able to do that. So yeah, I think Abbasindi and my involvement uh, was very empowering. I mean, without us even know, knowing it, um, we'd meet regularly. We'd have great times of practicing hard. I was a dancer. I used to dance for over 10 years. I was one of the, the dancers. So it was an all African women drumming and dance group. Powerful, um, powerful, powerful group of women. And the great thing about that is um, women of all ages were involved. Women would come for one or two years and go, you know, it's almost like you had a piece of the power by being part of that entity and you'd come, take what you needed, give what you can and then go off into life and, and move on. I fortunately uh, had the privilege of staying for 10 years. We travelled um, quite a lot of places. One of the biggest places I remember travelling was to Barbados to perform at Cropover, which was a great experience for us. So we had people with different skills who could apply for funding to help to send us all over. We had lots of different um, networks and connections. Um, so yeah, a great time, lots of debates, a lot of sitting down, uh, getting the glass of wine out, chatting amongst women, great, great laughs great friendships, really a good time. And I also remember at the time, uh, one of the activist activities that we were involved in was around um, the campaign for um, supporting the Lashley family at the time. And that campaign was instigated with Abyssindis being a good catalyst for moving it forward. And I remember we did lots of things, peti petitions, writings, getting lots of women to sign. And one of the biggest, strongest activist thing I think I did with, with the campaign was uh, we stopped traffic on Princess Road. Early morning, we were in. The idea was to cause as much upheaval as we could to get the press down, which we did, um, to be able to highlight the Lashley family rights to stay in this country. And um, I remember we, the fear with inside and that's the thing that I think we have we have this fear and this boldness that even through apprehension and anxiety we were still able to deliver and what that was we were just to walk into the road and stop traffic along busy Princess Road and we did it and the press came out and it was big publicity on Granada reports and all that and it was a real big um, change and transition in the campaign moving forward so you know, there's the, the quiet, professional, you know, handwriting, getting things done, but there's also, you know, in the past, there's been the bold, yeah, you know, forthright, let's get it done, let's make change, let's, let's act, let's be strong, let's be bold, and let's do what we need to do for our community. So that's something I remember. <laughs> as, I'm, as I'm talking, I'm seeing a real conduit between L Louise and um, aspects of my life because I'm now um, you know applied for and been accepted as a board member on the Karaoke Business um, Enterprise and it's it ticks a lot of boxes for me in many ways one is it's about giving back because it's a voluntary role so it's giving back to the community some of what I've received in many different ways um, two, it's linked to the, my area of growth for being um, a business, having a business and being and working in a business um, entity. It gives me a lot of aspiration um, as well as contributing 
to the board and one of the key areas um, that I'd like to be able to do is to build more of a connection with the community and the board. It's an, it's an excellent um, um, enterprise, it's working really well and it's really about encouraging more of our community to be actively connected and involved um, and so if I can be a conduit for that I will. Um, but it's also because I have my own company, I'm also be able in a position to give some value to it from that perspective. Being a self-employed black woman, um, I feel it's an important link to be able to add value to um, the board, the existing board, and to bring more black women in as well to um, create a different vibe, I think. <laughs> I think it's more about um, women owning their own power and knowing that they have the potential to be and do anything they want to be. We're all on this earth on an equal level. We're all human beings. And um, I believe we've all been given great gifts. And I believe we need to be passionate about what we have and what we can do and, and work hard towards it um, because it's, it's not going to be handy to you. I think it's also about overcoming challenges and fears because that's how we get stronger, um, not giving up, um, doing things in the right way um, and feeling good about what you have to offer, um, not being challenged by defeat, not being challenged by what other people might say about you because I think that's a big fear. It's a big fear I've had and I still have it, what other people think about me but I think that's a bit of a stigma that we have that we need to lose sight of. We should be edifying and supporting each other and congratulating each other and, you know, seeing each other as a catalyst that can help bring other people along rather than look at people with um, something that is something you could not aspire to or have a... Um, look at people in the wrong way for the wrong reasons. I think the more positive you are about seeing change in other people, the better it, it can reflect in your life. I think when we hold on to negativity and, you know, maybe having bad insights or thoughts about other people, I think that refl can reflect back on you indirectly. And it, you can lose a sense of growth because you're so focused or tunnel vi visioned on other people rather than what you have and what you can offer. And I think if anything, even though it's, it is a fear for me, stepping out into the unknown, but the unknown doesn't have to be bad. It can be a great and um, a good thing. And I think the other thing around being self-employed, the challenges are working on your own <laughs> a lot of the times, but it's bringing people in as and when you need them. Uh, I think that's really important. Um, and so I was grateful to be uh, nominated and being the runner up, um, something else I forgot to mention before actually, as an achievement um, for community award for being entrepreneurial woman or something. So um, that was something I was like, I don't, I don't even feel I connect with entrepreneur. That's not my vision, but I'm embracing the word. I'm getting comfortable around it and um, yeah, if entrepreneur is what it means, what it takes to, to grow and develop and do what you're doing, then I claim it. The karaoke business enterprise is, is Louise's legacy. Uh, Moshwaf, it may not be here today, but it's part of a legacy. There's many women who've been through that system who have come off and gone on and beyond. Um, even the video that's being done, the documentary, that's part of her legacy. You know, um, the connections that she has with, with you know, people who are working um, with, you know, first cut service and, you know, all the women that you've got together <clears throat> to do the documentary. We're, we, we've all got something to give. We've all connected with her in some way and she's left a lasting um, as a role model, uh, as a mentor as somebody to look up to and respect. She's left a legacy and it lives on. She, she definitely lives on. <laughs> so the documentary is an opportunity to share who we are as a community, what we have to offer, 
and not only for our community to recognise it, but also to allow that value to be spread out into other hemispheres because not everybody recognises our value. So we need to embrace it and then be able to share that with others so that they can see and hear and know it and understand it and love it because we are a lovable community and people. <laughs> yeah, I'm grateful for the Women of Soil. I think it's a great empowering program and project and I think we need to do more of it. Keep allowing our women to rise and shine just like Louise Dacacodio did and still is doing. <laughs>